Hey everyone, how y'all doing? Welcome once again to the Shekinah Glory Remnant channel. Hey, y'all, YouTube is pressed as a panini. They are on some serious ish. At first, I had to rub my eyes like, are you really? Did I would have like uh, 90 views. I'm just a little channel. <laughs> And then you wake up next morning, it's like 23 views. Like, what? what? I can understand subscribers. I think I talked about this before, but I got to be like, did they really just? I mean, <laughs> really? And I see what y'all doing. I see. But I counted all blessed in the mighty name of Yoshua Mashiach. Right? It but it's just not going to stop anything. It really isn't. So anyway, brothers and sisters, today's message is going to be about separate, 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 separate. It's really just the best thing. And if you can't separate physically, because as we talked about, not everyone has the monetary funds or the means to do so, but there are ways in which you can work on in your own life to move away from the beast or the matrix as they call it. And one is also just constantly seeking the most high and getting into his word, knowing his intention for you Knowing who you are and whose you are is absolutely important. The reading the scripture to renew your mind constantly in this wicked world, in this evil day. Whew. So, I took a little hiatus. You may or may not have noticed, but um, I was listening to a channel, Mr. Hebrew One. Very no nonsense, cut it to the white meat type of brother. And I uh, was led to his channel when I was trying to, like, I just loaded up my channel just to see um, something with the algorithms, you know. And the Holy Spirit quickened me to this channel. And uh, I was enjoying the music and everything. And then I think there was a young, yeah, there was a young woman who called in. And she was a part of a camp in the Demona, Israel um, area. So, I mean, I know there are black people that live in Israel because I was reading even an article that's saying that the Caucasian Israelites over there were trying to get out the black Israelites, so, you know, we knew they, were, they had them over there, but it was right on the heels of the video with regards to, you know, the Most High is the one who scattered us and took us out of our land, so we have to be patient and trust in him and his perfect timing to gather us back, so this was, and I don't mean to come against the young lady, but it just shows how it is important for us to discern people's motives. Okay. I was listening to the young lady and it just broke my heart because these people, when they do things like this, they break their spirit and hurt people hurt people. And it's just like, if you think that you're not going to be held accountable for the wicked that you do, the scripture says in Luke 17, verse 2, it were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and he cast into the sea than he should offend one of these little ones. Brothers and sisters, the Most High does not sleep. He sees the wicked that is done amongst us. And it is imperative for us to cry out aloud Cry out aloud against these injustices. All right? There's a there are things that happen amongst our people that have been happening over decades and centuries. 
And it's come to a point where, you know, there are some of our people who have to walk on eggshells or beat around the bush just not to touch on these topics. But that is why I really uh, like listening to Mr. Hebrew One. And don't get, don't get me wrong, there are a lot of other brothers out there that I've been listening to their channels and it's just like, wow. It's refreshing, like Seed of Israel, Big Judah, Watchmen Reports, um, Trumpet of Grace TV, just amazing brothers out there. And Hebrew One, Mr. Hebrew One, he really went in on this topic and it's, it's really something that is hidden from the sight of our people. You think everything is hunky-dory and these are some of the reasons why it's the scripture is telling you to, you know, not to follow man, but to follow the most high. If you truly read the scriptures with discernment and an understanding and wisdom, you'll see that all throughout the scripture, the Old Testament, it shows how man has constantly, constantly disobeyed and done wrong by the Most High. All the kings that he had, even our favorites, David, Solomon, some of our favorites, they've all done wicked things in the sight of the Most High, right? And this all came about because when we read the book of Samuel, let's get into the scripture. We read the book of Samuel, you see the reason why they wanted a king was because the other nations had a king. If that ain't some covetous nonsense, I don't know what else to say. They wanted one because the other nations had a king. So see, the very same thing the Most High has been, been chastising our people for is this very same thing that keeps happening. Because you see the other enemies have one, so you're like, okay, let's have one too. And this is why in Deuteronomy 28, the Most High said, I put you and your king in captivity. <laughs> oh, I was reading that and that just like struck out to me like, yo, <laughs> wow, that was so powerful. That was so powerful when he said that. Anyway, let's read uh, the scriptures about... First Samuel, nine, no, it's not First Samuel nineteen. First Samuel eight. All right, and it says here, then all the elders of Israel gathered themselves together and came to Samuel unto Ramah and said unto him, Behold, thou art old, and thy sons walk not in thy ways. Now make us a king to judge us like all the nations. Child. <laughs> and Most High shows us examples of these things and how they fail and why they fail constantly in our lives, but people won't listen. Still disobeying and still making themselves gods. Still wanting to do what you want to do because you don't want to listen. And then when, and I'm not talking about the young woman, but what she, this has been happening to her since she was a child. So adults that she trusted took her into this position. And those people who you thought would protect you now became the people who you needed protection from. I know how it feels. And I know a lot of other people out there knows how it feels. How it feels to lose that trust and... When I was listening to that young woman, you can just hear that pain in her voice, that anguish after going through years and years of that kind of abuse. There's nothing that compares to a wounded spirit, a broken spirit in spiritual death. And, and here you go. This is the very same thing that I was mentioning in the other video about they like to oppress you in your oppression. 
because brothers and sisters, there are some of our people out there who they might come looking just like you, but that you can't differentiate them from your Edomite enemies <laughs> or the other nations. It's like they literally just whatever spirit that was in the Edomites flew up into them as well. I remember going out last week and uh, there was a it was an older black woman and she was just on a different level of I, I look I was just speechless. She <laughs> she needed help and she needed it quickly because she was for a minute forgetting that we both go through the same struggles but she felt the need to try to put herself on a pedestal because she had a foothold or foot up in the beast kingdom because for whatever reason she's what do what do you call them coons I call them Judases, traitors. So she finds it very easy to backstab her own. And so, you know, so proud of it. <laughs> like she about to get a doggy bone. <laughs> a lot of her people are like that. Let's just be real. Can't tell them any different from the slave master. Because you listen to them and their mannerism and their mindset is just like they want to oppress you in your own oppression. They want to see you broken down and torn down. They don't want to see you have any opportunity. They would love to see you dead if it was up to them. Like wickedness is amongst us. And this is definitely why when the Holy Spirit unctioned me, it's like the most high scattered you. For you to conform. There was a lot of wickedness that was going on. Amongst our people when they were gathered. And he scattered us. In order for us to be delivered. So let's go to the book of Baruch. <laughs> Y'all know I was. I started out quoting this one. And I always just left it at. The part where it says. It was not for your destruction. But let's go into a little further. Baruch chapter 4. All right, this basically says a lot of the same things about why the Most High put his people in captivity because they provoked him to wrath. And uh, Baruch chapter 4, verses, uh, let's see, what verse was I reading? Okay, here we go. 6 says, You were sold to the nations, not for your destruction, but because you moved God to wrath. You were delivered unto the enemies. Can you imagine? Our people anger the most high. Provoke him and anger him. <sighs> why you think they won't do the same to you? This is why while we are here scattered, it's important for us to be working on ourselves. Working on ourselves and avoiding man's doctrines. These false doctrines that they have using that discernment. And if you don't have any, pray for some. Because it is to your detriment and even your children or family's detriment before you get up and follow just any old body. Woman or man. Okay. Like someone said, you got to chew the meat and spit out the bones. Okay. So we need to exercise a certain level of care when it comes to things like that and with the enemy be it external or internal you got to separate you got to separate yourself from them if this person is uh, conducting themselves in a manner that is contrary to the scriptures or contrary to a man of the most high or woman of the most high then Scripture is not telling you to join to them. I'm reading all through the scripture and it says to avoid these type of people. Fornication or people who fornicate, adulter adulterers, idolaters, wicked people on a whole. But no, not our people. They overlook these things. And I just have to go back to Deuteronomy 28 where it says that our people have been smit with madness. This is what explains some of the things that <laughs> sometimes just blows your mind. Like what? 
For example, there was a sister who um, she woke up a little bit out of, and I say a little bit, and you'll figure this out why. Because she used to be talking about Allah and Muslim and this and that. And, um, so she was talking about Yah and, you know, just like my relative who had called me, they were on that path and I understand baby steps, but then she started quoting that the symbols like Ra and Anunnaki and all this stuff were actually Israelite symbols. I'm like, don't claim that for us. <laughs> okay. If you're, if you're just starting out with, you know, find out who you are, your heritage and the getting into the belief system of being an Israelite, the best thing to do is start with the commandments because the first three would have knocked that out. <laughs> you would have known you don't need to claim no, no symbols or idols for us. Yeah. The Hamites or the Canaanites, the Egyptians. No, they didn't steal that from us. That's them. That's all them. <laughs> leave, leave it alone. The, I realized that there's an issue with our people. Some of our people just have too much knowledge. Too much knowledge, too much know it allness. <laughs> okay. <laughs> to certain things that you just seem to just know it all, and because you're so angry at the Edomites, and don't get me wrong, I know why. Because <laughs> they don't make it easy for you to get along with them. It does it just, I prefer to stay away from them. Like, it's the healthiest thing to do when it comes to interactions with reprobates and narcissists. But yeah, the sister was just claiming all these symbols and said, no, no, the white man took it over. No, it didn't. That was their stuff. Why do you think they're called the, the Egyptians of this, the, this captivity, the second Egypt, you know, America, beast of the earth, <laughs> because of the very same thing that most High said. All of this stuff that we followed were mainly as a result of idolatry. So anyway, I didn't want to make this too long, but um, what was I about to say? Yeah, when it comes to separating, uh, if uh, anyone has ever dealt with narcissists, reprobates, uh, which I'm sure you have, <laughs> uh, you pray for them. And I don't know if any of you ever had this issue happen because... With my 40-day fast, I talked about how my parents were and how they brought in a reprobate. And I don't know if I said this, but this reprobate tried to molest me <laughs> while I was there. If it wasn't for the fasting and the grace of the Most High, yeah, I would not be here today. Okay? And that means that that reprobate might not be here today either. <laughs> so, you know, it gave me patience not to do some things. But... It, sh it also shows that the Most High wants you to separate from these people. Because after the fast, what did he do? He separated me, took me to a whole other state, like a whole lot of other states far from this place, to Florida. So, yeah, I lived in Florida for a bit and still do for the most part. But, um... Took me all the way to Florida, far away from them, and I cut off all contact. And I had never felt better. Cut off contact from the narcissists in my family and the lessened contact with the reprobates and narcissists in our nation and the Edomites. Healthy feeling. I had the narcissists from my family. They started doing better and being better. Because I'm like, whoa, prayer does help. But... Coming together with them was where the problem was. And I didn't even realize that the Most High had been showing me this all my life. I always was like, why am I always the one separated from my family? Since I was a child, I was sent away to school. And then I came back and then I was sent away to college. My other siblings stayed home and, you know, <laughs> I just couldn't figure it out. Because they're all the same. The Most High, he always tries to show you the difference and that he rejected reprobates. So if they change, it's probably because of you, you know, and the best way is from you separating. So they don't have to keep drawing out your energy or your spirit and trying to change you. Just like we showed in uh, Songs of Solomon, where the Most High said, when they come, come amongst you, especially the nations 
that he said our people were not supposed to go into or they weren't supposed to come up into us, amongst us, it shows that they will change or try to change you because of their wickedness and their wicked ways and they love wickedness. So he will save his people who have the heart for him and he ain't trying to mess with the reprobates and the ones he rejected. That's why he rejected them. A lot of us are still trying to save them, but most I said separate. And if they really, really, truly want to be with you, they might change. And I said might. Or the most I can work on them from afar by, you know, through you. Who knows? But the narcissists in my life, since separating from them, they try to be better. And I appreciate it, but I uh, put boundaries. And I call them when I feel like it, instead of having them determine and demand when I should call. You know, things like that. So in the bigger picture, it's just to say that the, the narcissists in this world or the reprobates, which is the same thing. I mean, reprobates can fall into narcissism, sociopathy, uh, histrionic personality disorder, things like that. These people just don't care. They're highly self-absorbed, highly wicked, highly selfish. They just, they love wickedness, right? So these are enemies that we're dealing with. And so a lot of our people keep finding it hard to separate from them. And as long as you keep assimilating to their culture, just like the the black lady I was talking to y'all about who you can, can't even tell her different because she's just as evil as they are. You have a lot of our people who are the same way. Demons transfer. <laughs> so they, they think of ways to traumatize you and re-traumatize you and keep doing it. it. They're not attaching to you or cleaving to you for your own good. Right. And a lot of us like to, I know, I go back to the love your enemy, and in this case, you can still love your enemy from afar. You can love them enough to leave them alone and uh, separate from them. Some people think when I say love your enemy, I'm talking about unite with your enemy or integrate with your enemy or go sleep with your enemy. Absolutely not. The complete opposite. The complete opposite and from the, what the Most High has been showing me. You know, the thing would love your enemy and a lot of our people will still go and say, no, it means amongst your own household. It is bigger than that. Right? And I'm reading the scripture over and over to try to figure out what a, a couple of our other people have been saying. And I can see it. It's definitely something that we should be loving our own people and not the other nations. But then when you read the other scriptures, <laughs> and you're like, okay. So the whole point is that Israel is supposed to be held at a higher standard. All right? We're supposed to be held at a higher standard. And because we are in our captivity in these other nations, the Most High is trying to work on his people so that those who are supposed to be with him are able to prove themselves. Right? He turned his back on us. He took his face, removed his face from us. So we can see even in our own life clues to why he wants us to be better and things that he's trying to teach us about ourselves. For example, when I was, um, I was in the military, and I remember people telling me that, look, you have to be 10 times better than, you know, your white counterparts. And I'm like, what? Ooh, so we're not equal? We're not all humans? <laughs> so why do, I, why do I have to be 10 times better than them? But yet y'all want to preach this unity and yada yada. And then she was like, well, you know, it's just that. She didn't have an answer. This is what, what I just didn't understand. And then I read the scriptures the other day, right? It's just so interesting how it said this. Baruch 4, verses 27 to 28. Be of good comfort, O my children, and cry unto Yah, for ye shall be remembered of him 
that brought these things upon you. For as it was your mind to go astray from Yah, so be in return, seek him ten times more. That number, ten, <laughs> again. So he's telling you, you got to seek him ten times more than when you had him in your presence. You got to be that much more um, dependent on him and that much more uh, fervent in seeking him and knowing him. So before, maybe you could have just loved your own people and it would have been fine, but it's a whole other different level of, look, most high, you got to, you prove it yourself to him. If you got fast and pray three times a week or set it out four times a month, things like that, always seeking him, seeking his face, um, upholding his laws and commandments, doing the things he wants you to do, not mistreating each other. But if it means that this person is doing you evil, separate from them. Don't let them change you. Right? And I know some of us, we have to go to work with the enemies. That's why it's important to start your day out reading these scriptures. Seal yourself up. And I wouldn't tell you this for your own, for any, your destruction at all. If I didn't see it with my own two eyes, how the Most High was showing me why this is important, and it's not just your enemies, just love in totality. Now, we'll talk about that in another video, because this is getting a little too long. But with that, brothers and sisters, um, for your own spiritual health, spiritual, physical, mental health, you got to separate as much as you can. Don't be afraid to sometimes have to cut some people off. No, like that's what the scripture is talking about. When, if your right eye offends, you pluck it out. It's better for you, them to be gone than for the whole body to be destroyed. For your whole walk to be destroyed or to be upset. Things like that. You gotta avoid them, reject them. Even if it means those amongst us, because they're not doing the things the Most High told them to do. And, um, yeah. So, anyway, brothers and sisters, sorry if this was too long. And I told you all about what YouTube be doing. They, mm -mm -mm. but it's not going to stop. Right? The Most High and His prophecies, they are unraveling, they're going to keep unraveling. And it's going to show who the man of sin is. All right? If y'all don't know by now, I'm sure a lot of y'all have insight into it. But brothers and sisters, we'll talk about that in another video. Shalom.